for the last three years, it seems like the world everywhere, the entire globe has been living with chaos, confusion, conflict. Well, here's the good news. That's when the king of peace shows up on the scene right in the middle of strife and conflict. Why? Because he wants to bring transformation and reformation, not only for us individually, but cities and nations. That's the topic we're going to be talking about today on The Living Scripture, is how to find transformation and reformation in the midst of chaos and confusion. We'll be right back. Well, we are so happy you have joined us today on The Living Scripture. Before we get going, I just want to ask you, hey, I hope you will like, share, write a review, share your thoughts on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Pray, wherever you're listening to us. Also, hope you will check out Heartstone Network. We have tons of content on there to inspire, uplift, stories, testimonies. Anyway, today we are going to tackle this topic of transformation and reformation in the midst of chaos and confusion and pain. I'll tell you, well, that, ladies, I, I've said many times over the last, well, since COVID started in January of 2020, it's, it's hard to find peace anywhere. And I know it took me a long time struggling to just get back to having peace in my life because they're just, you can just feel all the turmoil in the atmosphere. Mm, agree. What do you think, Cindy? I agree too. And if you got to find it in your internal self in order for you to to exude peace to others too. It helps them to Do you feel like personal chaos, personal conflict is on the rise or is that just always been and always going to be? I think it's on the rise because people are really confused what it means to be a follower of Christ. Who are they in Christ? And there's so many conflicting messages out there. Well, wait, what do you mean people are confused about being the follower of Christ? What do you mean? There's just a lot of variations on what it looks like to be a follower of Christ. And we're seeing a lot of things, hypocrisy come out of the church. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that goes back, eventually when we study Isaiah 58, where there was this form of righteousness, but internally there was secrets and things that they weren't living their lives in accordance to what it meant to walk as a follower of Jesus. So I think people are confused. What does that look like? And Well, truth is also getting watered down mm-hmm. in societies. You know, there's a push for a one world government and the whole Marxism is, is infiltrating many countries on the earth. And of course his goal was right. to get rid of religion and kill God, you know? Absolutely. And so That's truth awful. is just getting watered down. And now truth is whatever you think it is. There's no absolute truth anymore. Mm. I agree with that. And I I think what we're seeing is in the church itself, we're having the foundation relayed and it's being brought back to what the truth is, which is the foundation of the apostles and prophets with the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone being Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So we're coming back Mm -hmm. to what was always supposed to be, but all these other isms that were built on a foundation, not just mm-hmm. even in Christianity alone, but in all of the globe, there is a transformation that's happening right now that's causing the foundation to be shaky and people are needing breakthroughs. I mean, well, now, what do you mean there's a transfer, there's a shaking needing to happen? Where's that coming from? Well, in because your mind? of what you're saying, the, the pieces that are right there that we can see, which is truth is being watered down. Yep. There's a woke uh, agenda. agenda. There mm-hmm. is, you know, you have the, the Pope Francis saying it's okay to bless homosexuality. I mean, even in, within the turmoil within oh, the own yeah. Catholic Church itself is like this guy's moved past heresy. He's into apostasy. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. what Cindy is saying. We're moving everything is it's like whatever you believe is okay to believe. And so there is this breaking of a of all these structures that have been built on a foundation that was not laid by Jesus Christ. And so those of us that are moving back into and desiring to come and stand for truth, the spirit of truth, are having to struggle. We're seeing chaos and confusion around us. 
And we're having to fight to hold on to what we know to be the truth. Well, let's talk about that. How do we do that? How do we individually navigate through all this confusion, this conflict, this fear? How do we navigate through that to be grounded so that we can experience the personal transformation and reformation in our own individual life? I know. I think we got to just get back to the basics and simplicity of walking out our journey with the Lord and spending time in God's word and learning to feed ourselves and then finding community where we have authentic community, where people can speak into our lives and we can live life together so that there's, there's an openness. Well, how do we take all of these voices that are coming? Mm -hmm. Because we have a lot of people telling us, like you just gave the example of the Pope. Okay, how do we figure out what is truth? What, what is the word of God of truth? What is my truth? What does God want truth to be for me? How do we get to that place? How do we know what voices to shut out and what voices to listen to? Because there's voices everywhere. I know. The silence. I, I feel like we need to spend time with God, with his word, and then in silence to hear his voice and trust that he's... he's in, the other voices are going to be silenced, and then we're going to get to hearing God's voice. That's very simple. No, and I don't, and it's profound mm -hmm. because the, the way that you know someone, we can go back to marriage or close relationships with a friend. You have to know him. You, right. you know him. I know Sandra when she's upset. She doesn't have to say anything to me. She can walk towards me, and I know in her face. Mm -hmm. There's certain expressions on your face I know, oh, she's frustrated, or oh, she's worried, or oh, she's mm -hmm. full of joy. And it's because I've taken the time to know you. And this is where we're having to go. We're going back to the foundation of allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us through the word and through that relationship. And so to, to be honest with that, if you haven't cultivated a relationship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit where you know when it's his voice talking to you, right. you're going to be tossed to and fro by every voice that you're listening to. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for me, it's, there is much time spent alone with him. And I think I've shared it here before. I've, I've learned to cultivate that relationship to such a point as I'm not confused when he's talking. Right. right. I know when he's talking. Mm -hmm. right. And I also know that if I'm not sure in a situation, I wait till I am sure Take that he's time. talking or mm -hmm. the word clarifies to me what I've heard in my spirit, you know, and I think this is a place that we're coming to. And, and especially in America, I think many mm. other countries or nations globally are much more in tune. We've talked about this before about the spirit realm. And America is known for being intellectual mm -hmm. and making everything understandable by how I understand yeah. it in my mind. And what's being taken from us is the understanding of the mind. We are in a place where we are going okay. to have to be moved by the spirit, supernatural life mm -hmm. that we are supposed to be living. Yes. And if you're not pressing into that, you're going to be more yeah. susceptible to being deceived. Well, I'll tell you one thing that I think is key, and this is going to be tricky, is... First of all, Jesus said, love is the greatest commandment, right? But, and then he says, without pride is detestable to God. I think that humility is the key for dealing with conflict and crisis and things like that. And let me tell you, that is a very hard pill to swallow. I've been in conflict with the situation in business and I have, I have fasted and prayed and I, I'm at the point now where I just have to sit and think, okay, I'm going to write this letter to someone. And if I write this letter and I look over at Jesus, is he going to give me a thumbs up? Or is he going to say, oh, Sandra. So I think people might call it eating crow or whatever. But, you know, the Bible says, like suing, somebody suing you. Somebody says, the Bible says, if someone sues you for a shirt, give them your coat. Give them more. Okay, but so here's the thing. I had a talk with a man uh, actually in from Zimbabwe, I had an hour long talk with him a couple of days ago and he's, they have just been hit by a horrible attack and they are grieving and it's so sad and they are having to walk in humility mm -hmm. and extend the olive branch and, and oh, just <clears throat> take the humility. And he said something to me that I want to get y'all's take on because I, I just almost took my breath away. He said, 
in an argument, in a conflict. One person can't be 90% right and the other 10%, and God take the person's side of the one that's 90%. He said, if you want the Lord to fight for you, you have to be 100% righteous. Oh, gulp. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Because I want the Lord to bless whatever I'm doing. So there you go. What do you have to say about that? Well, I think in which is what you're saying, there was conflict and confusion. I think one of the places that we have not learned is, and, and not it not <clears throat> here, but actually down here of what Christ paid the price for you and I to be whole. He took our sin. He took those things that would limit us from coming and being the greatest display of his image. And I think many times what we have done is we're not understanding the place that we're seated with him. So I believe that many of the conflicts that we're seeing right now are actually God helping us become more like him. And if you can see it from a positive standpoint of what this gentleman is saying, I'm not trying to be 90% right. I'm not trying. I'm trying to see your viewpoint in this situation. Which and is being how, righteous, if you're it saying is it. It's right, because right is righteousness is in right relationship with God. It's oh, not about good. your character. You being right. It's mm-hmm. about, are you being right? Mm-hmm. Are you displaying something right? It's that you're right with him so that he can, he can work on behalf for you. Oh, and, you know, I, I think what we're seeing a lot, which you're saying, and I know Cindy works with that so much, and she hit the point was God is... is is bringing us back to community in a way like Mm -hmm. we've never been in before, which is we have to begin to understand where we need one another in situations and circumstances. How do you know he's bringing us back together as a community? What are you seeing? What I am seeing is because I, I know for me personally with the prayer movement that I've kind of helped here in the birthplace region, what I call Texas, Texas down here. And, the last two years, all the Lord kept saying to me is as one, as one, keep emphasizing to all the people as one. And all of a sudden this year, there was a shift. And now he Mm -hmm. says, it's time for you to display the unity in your diversity. And I'm finding myself, what happens is, well, I love those aspects of Sandra, but that piece, is that really? And he goes, but isn't that a piece of Sandra? So that's a piece of me. So are you going to oh, not no. desire that piece of her because she's part of me? She's an image of me. And if and and this is where we have to come to. I mean, this this is an aspect that has been missed, I think, by maybe the American church, I don't know, or just overall, the displays that happen from those in the first century was there was a community of understanding the diversity with which each held to bring forth the greater display of Christ. Because again, we're, we are a people that is having to move off of me, my ministry, my thing, I, 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 Mm -hmm. and move back Mm -hmm. to, oh my goodness, it's about the father. It's about the son and it's about the Holy spirit. They're the only ones that carry the power and the demonstration, and yet they've chosen to run through you and I. So I have Mm -hmm. to appreciate, I may not love you. (laughs) I may not be, you know, the the foot doesn't Mm -hmm. want to be part of this, but it's that place of community that I have to value who you are and value Mm -hmm. the pieces that God put in you. And I think this is part of what the shaking is too, is coming out of our places of, well, these parts are comfortable for me. You know, I'm not much into deliverance. So, okay, well, you do that, Cynthia, Cynthia, you know, I'm Cindy, I'm not, I'm not into that part. Mm -hmm. Well, God's saying, no, you're into that part because she's into that part. Mm -hmm. So this is really a deeper meaning of Romans 8, 28, for all things work together for good for them that love God and are Mm -hmm. called according to his purposes. I, I listen, there is one thing I will tell you, I will, I will bet anything on is that somehow God knows how to take the things that are hard and make them good. That's it. I, he brings good out of everything hard. I don't know how he does it, but he does. Right. He does. Yeah, and I, I love how y'all both are like big picture people. And my mind thinks, you know, down to the small. Love it. And 
Because you know, if it, everybody was just like, man, Darla, nothing would get yeah. me. Right? <laughs> well, now, y'all cast but vision. It, you, did, you cast right. vision for us that think, you know, more nuts and bolts. But the, the family unit is such a unit that ha- is in chaos. And families build communities. They build yeah. churches. And it's so important that there's unity in families, not just husband and wife, but extended families, where they learn to bring resolution among you know their extended family and then in the church family that you learn to work with just in your church learn to work with people and so there's this we need to have this capacity to be humble authentic build community invite people into your space and and establish a loving environment where conflict can be resolved and it's not all about it has to be my way or the highway yeah okay so you you teach this a lot because you, your ministry is helping broken people become whole and, and forgive and all that other. What's, what's some action steps you tell people to start bringing peace back into the family? That's a great question. I, first, when I, I want to help women that are, feel so betrayed and feel wounded is to, to learn to slow down and Spend time with God and learn not to react, but just to learn how to calmly respond to situations so that they can bring peace into their home. And to be intentional about with what they say, to take the time to even potentially write it out, to pray over it so that it's well thought through when they do present a uh, a plan that's going to be a plan that they can move forward in. So that's it's good. it's very intentional. It's slowing down. It's time with God. It's trusting the Holy Spirit. You're you're thinking that you're bring, wanting to bring restoration, and so it's it's can be very hard when you're angry and hurt to to take those steps to pull back. And we're not really good at not exploding when we're hurt and wanting to hurt someone else when yes. they've hurt us. But it usually causes more chaos. So what's the secret to somebody's hurt you, you're very wounded, you really want to say your side, and you feel like, oh, it's weakness. If I just turn the other cheek and I'm loving and I don't tell them how I feel, they're going to think they're right and they're not. How do I get to that point of being okay with doing the right thing? Right. I don't think you should always turn the other cheek either. Oh, what? Yeah, I feel like you should process even write out sleep on it a day or two and then communicate and and in that time you've actually taken time to ask just like you were saying earlier you've asked Jesus like is this letter good is this what I want to communicate is it is it good and you then you've got other godly people that have poured in and read it too and are are giving you feedback so you're not living in isolation you're actually inviting other people in and then you you yeah, what was... Okay, so let's say you, you deal with a lot of wives that have been betrayed by their husband. Mm-hmm. Do you tell them, hey, it's okay. You can take a year to be very angry. You don't even have to think about forgiving him for a year, six months, two weeks. What what do you say? I try not to tell them what to do because that really causes them to... Because they've often, if they've been in a marriage a long time and in the church... They've been told to be quiet and just endure things. So I do, I listen to them. I tell them to find a safe place place to vent with someone who can hear your heart and then help guide you through how to navigate that. And anger is a part of the process of healing that you do need to learn how to get your anger out and find valid ways to do that. And... If you have to separate, sleeping in different bedrooms or whatever needs to happen so that you have your space to process, then then that's... So what you're saying is we don't need to feel guilty or beat ourselves up if we've been hurt for whatever situation, if we can't get to the forgiveness part in 20 minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And right. I, I also would add to that, I think in in a larger scale yeah. when we're looking which we do yes, that I big love, we yes, love that big, big picture give me the big picture <laughs> then, darla get, get, going back to those big pictures when we have conflict it is the only way that we can go deeper in relationship now i'm not talk, i'm i'm saying i just went yeah. through a betrayal myself not okay. from a husband's betrayal but in this betrayal the purpose of the betrayal was to to annihilate me 
and and the close relationship I had with this other leader. Mm. And so I had to walk. It was very hard to walk that because I so wanted to defend yourself, to defend or to look mm-hmm. at and what, you know, look at the person for what they are. But what, where I was, was able to go, you know what, Lord, I've been where, sh- where that person was. I've actually been that person. I've been a narcissist. I've been the one that was hurting people because of the trauma in my own life and mm-hmm. saying, okay, that's that. Now is the behavior acceptable? No, but I'm not responsible for her behavior. Now, I had to also then come over here to this other relationship that had almost been severed and said, how do I walk this now? And at the same time, God telling me, hold your head up because I'm in the middle of this. Mm -hmm. And yet he was teaching me something about my mouth Mm -hmm. and the use of my mouth, but at the same time telling me, I don't want you going into condemnation and thinking you're worthless, you can't do anything. All those things that pull us back and tell us to not move forward in what God's paid the price for us to do because he's aware of the weaknesses that we carry. And it Mm -hmm. doesn't nullify the depth and the richness of all the, the, the beauty that he's put inside of, that, that we talk about Psalms 139, mm-hmm. we are beautifully and wonderfully made. He doesn't cut us off. Mm-hmm. But if man decides to cut you off because of those shortcomings and say, now you have no value, we have to be the ones that press through that. Because conflict is actually the only way we can go deeper in relationship. Mm-hmm, yeah. And you know what we need to understand is, okay, you're my friend. So if uh, Joe Blow over here upsets you or does you wrong, you know, I can't help it. I'm going to take your side. You know, uh, I'm upset with that person. And somehow, I think without thinking about it subconsciously, we think God does that too. And here's the deal. God loves Joe Blow as much as he loves you. And he's about everybody's transformation and reformation. Mm -hmm. He's not taking sides. Mm -hmm. And I think this would be the same for countries. America versus Iran or Russia versus Ukraine. Mm -hmm. He's not taking sides. He wants all his children to love him. He wants to do amazing things for everybody. You know, this is, we just, it's like, you know, the American Civil War in the United States. Both sides preached that God was on their side. Both sides could take scripture and say, prove that their side was right. And that's just not the way it is. Right. And, and we're in, we're in a state of that right now of God. Again, we're talking about, he's cleaning off every single thing that's built, been built on the foundation that is not him worldwide. Right. He's I mean, you him. know, even, even with me bringing up the Pope situation, uh-huh. what's even funny in that about the blessings of the homosexuals, the African nation said, no, Yes. the African nations that are, that have, that are, Catholic, Catholic. Catholic. Mm-hmm. all of those bishops, po- I don't know that all yeah. the cardinals said, absolutely not. And the Pope came back and said, okay, except for Africa, <laughs> because seriously, he said, because wow. it's part of that is a, Whereas in the United States, he's fired bishops and people that have exactly stood because he's saying for them, it's a cultural issue. For us, it's something it, else. So It's a shame it's it, not it a is, cultural issue here. I mean, this is what's so exciting is if we can look past God wins. Psalms 2, he said, I am sitting on my throne laughing at all that that is trying to transpire Mm -hmm. to take over. Nothing is new under the sun. And every Mm -hmm. nation is going to make its decision. Every city, state, Providence, whatever you call your nation's, Mm -hmm. you know, individual areas, just like Mm -hmm. individuals are having to make a decision right now of going, I'm walking all the way with Jesus. It doesn't matter. Like Paul said, if you, if you bless me, I'm going to praise you. If you take me and beat me for, for your cause and make me a martyr, I'm going to bless you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stand with you no matter what comes against me. And I'm Mm. finding over and over the chaos and confusion that's coming at each one of us from so many different levels, Mm -hmm. so many from petty things of, I haven't had water at our townhome for now going on 10 10 days days. to, which means probably nothing. I mean, I've lived on an Island where I got water Mm -hmm. out of a bucket, but Mm -hmm. that small, Mm -hmm. that small thing is an irritant to, Mm -hmm. to the major thing of betrayal by a friend to you having situations to our nation in a, 
in mm-hmm. chaos. I mean, yes. the things that come out in our nation, we know aren't truth. But in all of that, there is no doubt that God is in the process of bringing transformation and reformation. That's all he's ever done. And he says, listen, I put it in Solomon to tell you there isn't anything new under the sun. So that, I think, in one way has been my place of going, I don't have to fear this. Right. I don't, mm-hmm. I have to. Okay, so when conflict like comes it. to you or something hard comes to you, what's your immediate thought and how you walk through it? Is I, I have to stop. I got to get his point of view on it. And I'm not saying it's easy. I mean, I, I've told Joel recently, I, at the end of the year, this all of this betrayal and all this mess, this muck and stuff was mm-hmm. happening. And I went to sleep and asked the Lord, I said, could you give me a dream? What is going on? Because it's not that you're not stirred and you're not upset and you're right. you're angry or you're frustrated or and and then you're at that place of like you're saying, well, am I kind and and give them everything or you know how am I supposed to be? Is this how I would look mm-hmm. like Jesus or mm-hmm. is this what you're asking me to do? Do I get out of this ministry? Do I stay in it? Do I stay in this connection? Do I not? Because all of those are along the path making that decision and then he gives me this crazy dream about leaping over a threshold passing demon spirits and going this is what i i want you to do and so what have i done Mm -hmm. is i'm realizing i don't have to be afraid when i'm following you Mm -hmm. and there wasn't any example in the scriptures that any of these men that were called to do whatever it was they were called to do or a few women deborah and some of them that wasn't let when they followed what he was leading them to do, they came through unscathed. I'm not saying there wasn't fear. I'm not saying they didn't get beat. I'm not saying they didn't get hurt. I'm not saying relationships weren't busted off, but they came out stronger in him and had less fear because they knew God better. I I know Holy Spirit. So we really got to change our focus to understand instead of thinking, oh, somebody did me wrong or, oh, something's hard or, oh, what's going on in the country. Well, no, what we have to think about is, okay, Lord, this is a great opportunity for me to be closer to you, for me to build my character, for you to make me better. This is what you're wanting. So this is what we have to do. We have to focus on the benefit. We have to focus on Romans 8, 28. And you have a divine assignment over you that the enemy is trying to thwart and he'll use people so as we get older we all kind of have like know where our lane is where God's calling us and we often have to go back to the quiet when things are thrown at us to try to get us off course or to take us out and we get back to that spot of just silence and hearing his voice which is so rare today like when you wake up what's the first thing you do most people pick up their phone and start scrolling and it's, I, I read a study that uh, took a bunch of people through a, a study where they had 15 minutes of silence. If they didn't want the silence, they could hit a buzzer that would electrocute them. And so <laughs> out of the study, it was uh, about 70% of the men chose, they could not sit in a room wow. for 15 minutes of silence, and they chose the electrocution. Uh-uh. Right. And the, and the women was a little less of the number, but there was like a percentage under 50 that chose to be electrocuted. So we, the culture shocked. shocked yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's the culture <laughs> shocked. <laughs> culture shocked. <laughs> so our culture has wow. so primed us wow. that we can't even be silent ever because our brains start to like, panic oh my gosh and i'm sitting here talking about three four five hours a day with him right i've chosen uh, like i drive in the car if i have a long drive to dallas like four or five hours oh i will turn the radio off and drive in silence exactly (sighs) just breathe my husband oh and you get my husband's truck that talk radio was on and i get in the car and i go (gasps) my stress just goes to go up and i go i would be in turmoil all day long if i had to listen to the news all the time oh gosh i did too i I don't need to hear all this stuff but (laughs) we've trained ourselves right right to be able and we crave it now it's something so we people have to train themselves like start with five minutes and it's what you're saying we're back to the original place of it this is what brings transformation and um, God is in the process of transforming us because we are the image bearers that are going to carry his power. Mm-hmm. We haven't been a church that's demonstrated the power of God. And this is what we are. This is what I'm so excited mm-hmm. about. I just keep going. I don't know how you're going to do it, but use me. 
Uh, I want it. I want to be closer to you. I know that you can do it. And whether I'm on the sideline just praying for the other people that are manifesting you, I'm all for it. Because I know that, 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 I know. Mm-hmm. It's this is where we are, in, in a, especially in America, yeah. because we are now having all the nations, wow. and he is he's bringing the nations to this ground. I yeah. know without a doubt for the true DNA that we are those that send out the gospel of the kingdom of God into every nation, and he's hauling up mm-hmm. in here. So we're in this chaos and confusion, civil war, transfer. You can look at all that stuff in, in Matthew 24, but no, God is about mm-hmm. to pour us. I mean, they're, they're up there going, I want to do it. I want to do it. Because That's they right. are love. Mm-hmm. We just got those in heaven. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, well, just the Father and the oh, Holy Spirit. So, I mean, he's wanting so to pour excited, himself yeah. out. He yeah. wants... Everyone that passes a shadow mm-hmm. to get healed. He wants all these manifestations yes. to happen again. We're just at the, we're having, you know, we're at this place of ridding our yeah. understanding. Preparing ourselves, really. I yes. I was at a prayer summit on Monday and I did a portion on listening prayer and I was listening to God before I went up there to guide people through listening prayer. And I heard the Lord say, I want you to tell them this. And he said, tell, the, tell all these pastors and ministry leaders how much I love them. And then he said three times, tell them, get ready, get ready, get ready. Oh, yeah. Wow. And then I saw on the horizon this sun, and and I just felt uh, that there is a shift about to happen. And I heard it again, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. I totally agree. So, Amen. so well, that, I love that. That's a, that is a great way to end our talk together today. <laughs> Woo! So we want to encourage you to stay the course. Yes. Pull in close to Jesus and... Uh, anticipate transformation and reformation in your own life. We're so glad you joined us today. Hey, if you have any comments, we'd love to hear from you. Contact at heartstonenetwork.com. And we will look forward to being with you next week. God bless everybody.